Hey guys, I hope you're all having a great day so far. Here's another problem that's pretty short, but there are some tricks needed in order to figure it out. We want to design a delivery system for crates of exercise equipment that uses a spring found at the bottom of a ramp. The idea is to have these moving crates slide down the ramp, which will experience kinetic friction along the way, then immediately stop at the bottom and not bounce back. The problem description gave us quite a bit of info to work with, but there's three things we still need here. And those are the initial height of a crate, the compression distance of the spring, and of course, the spring constant. Let's start with the initial height. We can keep the ramp in the picture for a nice helpful visual, but I'll move it over to the side since we'll need to use some trig here. Recall that the definition of the sine function is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That means the sine of 22 degrees gives us the ratio of the initial height of a crate divided by the ramp's length of 8 meters. If we multiply both sides by 8 meters in order to get rid of this denominator on the right, then we get the initial height in terms of quantities we already know. So that part's good. Next up is the spring compression distance, and for that, we'll need a free body diagram. Here's our crate as it reaches the bottom of the ramp and comes to a stop. The forces acting on it will be its weight, the normal force from the ramp, the resistance force of the spring, and most importantly, the maximum static friction that can act on the box. That is what's going to prevent it from moving back up the ramp. The weight doesn't lie along an axis, so we can insert the angle of the ramp and break that vector down into its components. Let's take a closer look at how things are behaving in the x direction. If the box comes to a halt, that means the acceleration has to be zero. Hence, the right hand side is completely zero. On the left, we have the sine component of the crate's weight and the maximum static friction acting on the box, balancing out the resistance force of the spring. Remember that the equation for the elastic spring force is just kx, and if we move that quantity over to the right-hand side, we can divide both sides by k in order to get an expression for x. It might feel a little strange that we don't know k yet, and here we have it hanging around in the denominator, but we'll take care of that shortly. Let's move on to the conservation of energy equation. There's only one quantity that we can reduce to zero here, and that would be the final kinetic energy of the crate, since we want it to remain motionless once it reaches the bottom of the ramp. All the other terms get to stay. What we need to do now is plug in our expression from the last slide for x and then square it and use algebra to solve for the spring constant. What's nice here is that one factor of k that's squared in the denominator will cancel with the one out front. And then we can just squish everything together on the right hand side into a single fraction that only contains a single k downstairs. Next, let's multiply k on both sides and then divide out the sum of energies in the parentheses on the left. There's a coefficient of two hanging out here, so let's also distribute that in. Once we do that, we're ready to start plugging in some numbers. It's a pretty long expression when you do that, so be careful when entering this into a calculator. You can use extra parentheses to separate everything if necessary. When I do that, I get the following result. To match the answer 
that's found in the back of the book, we're going to round using three significant figures, which will bump this answer up to 2,440 newtons per meter. And that's it. As always, thanks for watching.